Assalamu alaikum everyone. For those that are new here, my name is Moaz. I recently graduated from uni and decided to take a gap year and move to Dallas, Texas to study my deen at an Islamic school called Qalam Institute. Recently, I've gotten a lot of awesome feedback from you guys and just thought I'd give you all some more insight on what it's like here. Between studying the deen, going to the gym, cooking, doing homework, making videos, going to halaqas, and trying to still have a social life, there is definitely a lot that I have to balance. And yes, that was Omar Sulaiman. More of that later on in the video. But let's jump straight into it. Bismillah. It is currently 6.10 a.m. I don't want to be awake right now. So just like most of you guys, I never really want to wake up in the morning, but it's just something that we got to do. And the first rule of order every morning is to make our bed. Just really get that small win. It might seem like something minuscule, but doing something small like making your bed will help snowball into other more productive things that you can do. And then obviously as a Muslim, the first task every morning is to pray Fajid. Shocker, right? <laughs> Fajid is so important for every Muslim, right? It just sets the tone for the rest of the day. Never mind the fact that it's obligatory, but the days that I do hit it always just tend to have more barakah, more energy in them. The days feel longer, etc. But if I do miss Fajid, I can always sense that my mood and energy levels and just overall productivity take a hit the rest of that day. So if you're not waking up for Fajid, let this be your number one goal. Everything else you're trying to achieve in life will cascade from that. And then if you're consistent, mashallah, with waking up for Fajid, pick one or two days from the week that you'll start going to the Masjid and praying Fajid there. This is something I'm trying to implement and hopefully will do every single day. But the days that I do pray Fajid at the Masjid are genuinely amazing. The spiritual benefits and the edge you get are one thing. But even just the fact that I'm so much more awake now and ready to start the day. But now that we got Fajr down, we can mark that off and move on with the rest of our day. I am so tired. <sighs> so it's about 7.30, which means I have about an hour before class. And if you watched the last video, you know that I like using this hour to get all my content stuff out of the way. To edit videos, upload, and make videos if I need to. That way I don't have to worry about it the rest of the day. And I find that this hour in the morning... Is probably the most productive hour of the entire day. I'll also eat breakfast. I eat the same breakfast every single morning. Um, I'll shower, do my skincare, and then we are out the door. I am not feeling it this morning, but sometimes in life it's not about how you feel. You just gotta get the work done. So let's not waste too much time. Bismillah. My mornings are the calm before the storm. It's the time for myself where I can really just work on my personal goals when everyone's still asleep and set myself up for success for that day. They're extremely important and I've noticed that the days I tend to wake up late, 30 minutes before class, and don't really get that morning time to work on projects or clean my room or just freshen up and eat a healthy breakfast, the rest of the day seems a bit more stressful and chaotic than usual. Not sleep after Fajr. Stay after Fajr and work on that project. Stay after Fajr, work on that lecture. No, 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 do not stay up late, pull an all night or drink Red Bull. No, no, go sleep now. Whatever you will do at night, that hour, no, replace it with the morning. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam made dua. He made dua, he says, Allahumma barik li ummati fi bukuriha. Oh Allah, bless my ummah during the early hours of the day. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, maybe the hour after Fajr may be more impactful than a four or five night hour studying at night. But you have to be very intelligent and know more about the Islam. May Allah increase us, all of us, in the beneficial knowledge. Ilman nafi'a, ya Rabbil alameen. So classes start at 9 a.m. and end at 3, and for obvious reasons, I'm not able to record much during class, but we basically have six different periods with a 10-minute break between each one. And I'll be honest, class takes a lot out of me mentally, but at the end of the day, it is 100% worth it. Being able to study the Dean under these amazing teachers is an opportunity I know I'll probably never have again, and so we definitely try to make the most out of it. Sahabis, they even went to China. Oh. Why do you think that they came from China? Because the Muslims went there. Oh. They're trying to stop the Islam. The growth of Islam, the growth of COVID, parallel. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? If you're, if you're getting robbed, who do you call? Oh, I'm getting shot, who do you call? The police. What are the police called? The cops. The pigs. Oh, the pigs. Oh, wow. They want to make us reliance on the pigs. Oh, wow. So then we say, oh, the pigs, they're helping us, let's eat them. They want to say, okay, my kid 
kids in terms of call the pig. Mm. They say the pig is helping me so much. Oh. Why don't I just eat it? <laughs> just eat it. The bacon. I become the pig. The pig. أخبر الأيام أن في وصال قم بنا وانظر لآيات الجمال قم بنا وانظر لآيات الجمال we are off to the best part of the day, of course. We're going to the gym. Classes are fun, don't get me wrong, but having to sit down for six hours straight, uh, you wanna just get up. You wanna get up and move, throw some weights around. So that's exactly what we're gonna go do right now. So we brought our gym stuff with us so we can go right after class, and we are about to kill it. Today is a push day, so we're gonna hit chest, triceps, and shoulders, and I am very excited. The gym is just such a beautiful place for a young man to go because it's so much more than just a physical workout. You're training your mind to stop being so soft. You're training it to push past the pain and really just get that last rep in. You're training it to lower your gaze and focus on your workout. And naturally as well, you're gonna be surrounded and you're gonna meet other brothers who are also motivated and want to achieve the same goals that you do. So naturally you start to meet like-minded people and it's just a really amazing environment to be around. So if you're not already in the gym or at least doing some sort of physical activity, as a young man, you must make that a priority. Two more, yo, two more. No, 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 yo, one more. Yo, one more. I have one more. Damn it. Yeah, Ryan was pretty upset with me for that last rep. I definitely had it in me, but kind of wussied out on it. And that's why it's so important to have a gym partner because you push each other and you keep each other accountable. And it works with other aspects of life as well, right? We have a fedged group chat where we keep each other accountable for a fedged. We have a study group chat to keep each other accountable for our studies. It's really important to have people in your life that will keep you accountable and where you can push each other. ومصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة ولأحل لكم بعض الذي حرم عليكم وجئتكم بآية من ربكم فاتقوا الله وأطيعون إن so weekdays are pretty hectic once i finish at the gym i really don't have much time before halaqa so i'll kind of just unpack clean my room a bit and then eat dinner usually i have meal prep ready but i didn't cook this week so we just made some gross i don't even know what that is but it was dinner for the day so i didn't really get much time to study even though i really really wanted to obviously that's a damn lie. But we are headed to Umar Sulaiman's weekly halaqa. He does a lecture at his masjid covering the life of Aisha radiallahu anha, which is a lot of fun to go to. So we're gonna go to that, meet up with a couple of the guys, and then probably study later at night. This is this is the one issue with my scheduling is that studying always gets pushed back to like the last thing. Um, so you just have to be really diligent with it. But anyways, let's go to halaqa. O oh, Messenger of Allah, who is the most beloved person in the world? Thinking, there is no way he's not going to say my name. And the Prophet says, without hesitation, Aisha. And that's something that they did not understand at the time. How are you going to say Aisha? Right? So no, I'm not talking about your wife. I'm talking about the men. Ya Rasulullah, al not the, not the women. And the Prophet said, well, Abuha, her father. Abu Bakr will be about Tarana. Then he said, okay, then, fine, Abu Bakr has been your best friend forever, we understand that. He said, then Umar. He said, then who? He said, then Uthman. He said, then who? He said, then Ali. He said, then I stopped asking the Prophet Sallallahu because I thought he'd never say my name. <laughs> she had the keys, as we said, to the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu She knew how to show love to the Prophet Sallallahu in a certain way as well. And so she deserved it forever, for all time, in Jannah to Firdaus. Because remember, Jabir salam said to the Prophet salam, that this is your wife in this life and in the next. She is your wife in Jannah as well. We are back home. That was genuinely, genuinely top five Umar Sulaiman halaqas I've heard. It was, it was incredible. Today he talked about the, um, the love stories and the romance between Aisha radiallahu anha and the Prophet peace be upon him. And it was just such a pure love between them. It was really refreshing to hear 
what a pure love for the sake of Allah really looked like. How the, how the Prophet Sallallahu would emulate that and how Aisha Radiallahu would respond to it. It was really eye-opening and different from the stupid TikTok marriage advice that you get nowadays. Umar Suleiman said that if you know this love story, you don't need to know any other love story. And after hearing, you know, the stories that, that he gave us, I can 100% agree to that. Yaqeen uploads that same exact lecture on YouTube, so I'll link it down below if anyone wants to listen to it as well. But anyways, it is just about 9 p.m. is the time that I leave in the day for my Islamic studies. Obviously, we have homework every day and it has to get done at some point. And so from about 9 to 10.30 is when I usually get that stuff done. <laughs> or at least try to. I'm going to be very honest. I'm trying to be consistent with studying, okay? It's <laughs> I don't have a 100% track record, okay? It is what it is. But I'm trying. <laughs> Anyways, let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. So we are done with studying for the day. That is as much as my brain can handle. All we have left, as you guys can see, is just the typical night routine, just kind of settling down, reading some Quran, journaling, um, and stretching. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those, but that's pretty much gonna be it for this video. Um, hope that gave you a bit of insight on how I managed to balance my life. Honestly, thank you guys so, so much for watching these videos. Your support is genuinely means so much to me. If you haven't already, make sure to join the fam and subscribe, we are growing very quickly, alhamdulillah. So join the family and inshallah, I will see you guys in the next video. Wassalamu alaikum.